podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. Across North Carolina, the number of abandoned cats is growing. This increasing problem inspired the creation of the Goat House Refuge, a no-kill shelter that provides medical and adoption services for abandoned and rescued cats in Chatham County. Mike O'Connell has details. When I was a little girl, I was a little autistic, and I could not communicate with people, really, but I could communicate with all the animals, and especially with the cats. My father was working at night, and one night in the winter, it was icy, snowy, and everything, he came home with a little, little cat, all wet and icy, <laughs> and he lifted up my blanket and put that kitty on my chest and closed the blankets, and that was it. For me, that kitty was the world. My name is Siglinda Scarpa. I'm the founder of the Goat House Refuge. The Goat House Refuge is a place for cats that have lost their home, that were abandoned, they were uh, thrown in a shelter. I want to have a place for the cats where they can, if they are not adoptable, they can live the rest of their life here. This is absolutely a no-kill shelter. We don't kill the animals here. If an animal gets uh, here and it, it's not possible to save the animal and is in great pain, we go through a great length to understand when the animal wants to go. And then our veterinarian is going to put him down humanely. We are a cage-free uh, environment. That does not mean that we don't have cages. We do have cages for kitties that have special needs. We have a, a kitty that is uh, very, we have many cats that are allergic. So they need their specialty allergy food, or they are too shy to be out with all the other cats. And I'm afraid they will go out and stay in the cold at night without eating because they are afraid of the other cats, they are too shy. So they have a very comfortable cage, even with hammocks in there. One thing that Siglinda's is unique in that those kitties that live there, they're free to be with the other animals of their kind. A lot of the ferals that live there get along just fine with all the kitties. Let's see what you look like. Okay. We have four veterinary technicians on staff. They are here, they come, they take turns, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and we have two shifts. They take care of regular medications. I'm assuming he has ear mites, as dirty as his ears are. And if the cats get a sniffle, oh, they have an infirmary. We're vaccinating, um, microchipping, examining. Um, Francesca's getting a three rabies, and a FERCP, and a microchip. And you said I've started them with a protocol for everything that comes in to the clinic to start their vaccine before I even get to see them before they even enter the facility to give them a, an intranasal vaccine. Get any skin in. At night we have in this building we have the floor it's heated and in the winter we put down all the quilts on the floor and you can see if I come around 10:30 at night before I go to bed and I can see all the cats, feral or not, sleeping on the warm floor. The volunteers are really basic here. They do an enormous amount of work. They come and, and they clean all the cat litter. They feed the cats. They, they know each cat that is in a cage has a special food, and they, they are always there preparing the food for each cat, and, they know each problem of each cat and they pay attention to them, do all the laundry. They bring the cats to the vet when it's necessary. We had volunteers running to the veterinary school uh, to bring a cat that was in terrible pain and things like that. They are here constantly to, to provide a huge support to this place. And the cats know them and love them and they love the cats. And this relationship between the volunteers and the cats is basic for these animals to be happy. I like the one with the black diamond on it. 
Yeah, I saw him or we have uh, we have about 200 cats here and we have a very good adoption rate we are adopting cats regularly constantly in very good homes these past two weeks two and a half weeks we found homes for 15 cats we know that they're all doing very well they're very happy and the families are very happy The biggest challenge to the Godhouse Refuge is to keep this level of care for the cats. And having people on staff that cares for them with such love and attention and being so capable. So to make enough money, we have to come up every month with thirteen to $14,000 to pay for the whole thing. Electricity, heat, everything. And in the summer, cooling off and whatever else they need. This is the biggest challenge. On June 17th, the refuge is sponsoring Cafe Italiano, a benefit luncheon at the Carolina Inn to support the shelter. If you would like more information about adoption and the refuge, visit GoatHouseRefuge.org. Podcasts on UNCTV.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you who invite you to join them in supporting UNC-TV.